good afternoon. It's Izzy here from Izzy's Crafty Bees. And I'm an independent Stamping Up demonstrator here in the UK. I'm based in Nottinghamshire, um, which is in the Midlands of the UK, just right in the middle. And I'm here again on Tuesday lunchtime for another live demonstration. Hi there, Sylvia. Thank you for joining me. Um, yes, that's great, because I know I'm live now. I just d jumped straight in today um, and just started to say hello. So, hi, Mum. Sylvia beat you to it again. Don't know how she does it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, hi and welcome to my Tuesday lunchtime live. And um, today I'm going to bring you three, uh, three cards. They're pretty easy to make. Nothing particularly... Um, dramatic about the layouts or no fancy folds just three really cute cards made with a free stamp set and who doesn't like a free stamp set hi I can see Sue's joined us now as well so hi Sue so yeah um three different ways of coloring though because these are lined images on this stamp set I'm going to show you the stamp set itself in a tick when I swing you around and show you my work area so today really I'm going to focus on um, just crafting and chatting, but showing you three different ways to add colour to your lined outline uh, image in a stamp set. And you can replicate this, any of the techniques, with any lined, outlined um, image stamp. So, um, before I do swing you round though, I'm just having a look, see how many people are on. Yeah, before I do swing you round, um, just three of my golden moments from this week. So since I saw you last on Tuesday last week, um, I had a, a night out, out with girlfriends. So we have, every so often we have a board games evening and last Thursday evening we had a board games night. So that was great fun. Um, we played a game called Mexican Train, if any of you have heard it. It's a really fun take it's kind of like a dominoes game if any of you like board games i can highly recommend mexican train it's good fun um it means you've got to think strategically a little bit and but you can still chat with your friends so it's quite a nice sociable board game so that was thursday um i had a lovely walk on sunday morning with lorna my friend we just had a walk out um into the countryside near me and I showed Lorna around some of the nature reserves. We came across a couple of birders. There were lots and lots of birders. I live near a wetlands kind of nature reserve area and there were lots and lots of birders and um, so I stopped and asked what was going on and what was special and it was nice to actually have a chat with a couple of these birders and they told us about some of the birds that are around locally. Um, I can see lots more people jumping on, so that's great. Hello, whoever you are, because I haven't got my glasses on, I can't see who you are. That's really funny. Um, and the other golden moment was our bathroom revamp progress is happening. So yesterday I hung my wallpaper. Who wants to have a sneaky, sneaky peek at it? I've got a little scrap left over here. In fact, it isn't a little scrap, it's the remainder of the roll. So this is my wallpaper. Let's see which way up it goes. It's called Wonderland, I think it's called Wonderland Tropical. Look, it's got a toucan, a parrot with a crown on, and it's somewhere, it's got, look at this chameleon. It's fab, isn't it? Oh, so I've only got that on one little wall. It's only two rolls wide is the wall, but it's just a really fab, fun pop of colour. Anyway, enough of that. They're my three golden moments. I'm going to swing the camera around or switch the camera around and let's get having a look. Let me just see. I need to sort this cable out so we can't see that shadow. And looks like, just bear with, I'm going to just faff with something because looks like my phone holder is actually pinching the volume. Oh. Sorry about that. It looked like it was just pinching the volume button. Can everybody hear me? People are dropping off, so I'm wondering whether I've got a problem with my sound. Can everybody hear me okay? Oh, sugar. <laughs> it's 
excuse me sorry it's my phone holder i didn't get that right that's great thank you for the thumbs up there whoever that was super so um let me just sort out oh. i do apologize for all this faffing right i think i'm sorted now awesome so let me pop the cards out that we're going to make today so we've got a lovely sports car a fun camper van and a cute beetle um i don't need to explain this i'm sure that this is self-explanatory if you do shop with me please use this host code um and yes and i will send you a free gift if your order is over 25 pounds so i'm going to show you how to color in th add color in three different ways ever so simple but you need to feel a little bit brave we're going to use alcohol markers for this one and then we're also going to use stamp and write markers for this one which is not something that i use very often for coloring in because you do need to feel a little bit brave but as this is a cartoon image i'm going to share with you how i did that so let me share with you the stamp set and the products first that we're going to use today so this is driving by it's a cling stamp set which means it's the red rubber kind with the foam and there are six stamps in the set or in my case i've actually got eight stamps in my set and i will explain why in a little while um so yeah this is a free stamp set in the celebration brochure so you can get this stamp set completely free if you spend 45 pounds on any product in any of the catalogues so that's the annual catalog the mini catalog or indeed the online specials because we do have some products that are just available online and they're our kits so things like the paper pumpkins and our kits um, so any of the specials that are online only and don't appear in a publication, um, anything that's in the mini catalogue or anything that's in the annual catalogue, if you spend £45 you can pick this stamp set driving by completely free until the end of February. So celebration runs until the end of February so we've just got a month to go or thereabouts. The other thing that I will use on each of the cards is an embossing folder and it's the Hive 3D embossing folder and that is in the January to June mini catalogue and it's part of the Heart and Home suite and it makes like a honeycomb um, embossed image so I will show you that as we go along and we start making. So let me just pop my catalogues to one side, she said looking for a surface that is actually clear I've got stuff everywhere okay so I'm going to actually start with this card so I'm just going to pop those two to one side I'm going to start with this one um, and I'm going to just unpack my bits and pieces so I'm also going to use the layering circle dies just to cut this circle let me show you what I've got. I've prepped everything today, so I've prepped all my little bits and pieces, but I will give you the measurements such as they are. But the pretty simple, straightforward cards, nothing complicated about the layouts at all. Um, but I just thought it'd be fun to do some stamping. I'm going to introduce another stamp set to this one, just for this image here behind the palm trees. And this is in the annual catalogue, Timeless Tropical. It's also a cling stamp set and I'm going to use the palm tree image and I'm going to use the sentiment rest and relax you deserve it. Now I'm going to leave the card with that sentiment on the front and I will pop it in my box and that leaves me able to then use um, this card. I could send this card to somebody who was taking a holiday and just say have a great holiday. Uh, catch you when you get back or I could stamp happy birthday in the middle and say rest and relax you deserve it have a happy birthday so I'm going to leave the inside of the card actually blank but I quite like this sentiment because I think it actually lends itself to different occasions so let me just get everything out so I've mounted the sports car stamp I've mounted the palm tree stamp and the sentiment stamp so we'll get all of those out onto my workspace I'm going to use Stazon black, um, jet black ink 
for my lined image I'm just going to move this over this way a little bit I'm just looking at my light let's see if I can amend that and give me a thumbs up if the lighting's okay please I'm going to just pop my um, hive embossing folder to one side thank you Helen hi Helen I'm just going to pop that to one side because I'm going to bring my cutting machine in and I'm also going to use some pool party ink to stamp the palm trees behind. Now I'm going to bring in some marker pens and I'm going to be using these Stampin' Right markers which are sold in colour family packs and I'm going to be using those to actually add colour to the little car and I'm also going to use a chalk marker just for some highlighting. So let's crack on. Um, let me take a seat so I won't be looking at comments for a little while. So I've got a plain basic white envelope which I will stamp. I've made myself a card blank in basic white um, thick card and I've cut that half an A4 and then I've scored it at um, just shy of 15 centimetres. So our cardstock, A4 cardstock, isn't quite 30 centimetres, so I always just score it just shy of 15 because we are 29.7, I think. So I just, I just eyeball it, to be honest. I don't measure precisely. I've then cut myself... Oh, I seem to be missing my piece of pool party. Bear with me. I've cut myself another piece of basic white... And that's probably just 10 centimetres by 10 or something like that. 10 by 8. And that's for stamping the car. I've got a scrap from my drawer. I often have these little scraps and they're one and a half centimetres wide. And they go in my drawer and I keep those for sentiment. So that's just perfect for a sentiment. I've also cut myself a piece of real red cardstock. And that is um, 14 centimetres by two centimetres and that's the little piece I'm going to emboss and it just adds a bit of texture. I find for masculine cards, um, if I'm not adding any ribbon or any other product like um, embellishments, a bit of embossing just adds a bit of texture. Now I've cut myself two little pieces of designer series paper and I've used um, a mixed pack. Now this is the Pattern Party Designer Series paper and it actually comes 12 inches by 12 inches but it's a mega pack of 48 sheets and it's only available as a host item right at the back of the annual catalogue. Lots and lots of bright colours and the other side is all monochrome. So if you order over £150 worth in the annual catalogue or if you host an event you can actually pick this pack up. Now I picked a pack up and split it between myself and some customers um, as a free bit to my customers. Now I'm just going, excuse me, I'm just going to grab some pool party cardstock. I said I'd prepped everything and for some reason I've got this layer just missing so I'm just going to get my um, trimmer. Let me just move a few bits out of the way and I'm just going to cut my matte layer for the base. So it will be 14 centimetres by, should be by nine and a half. Uh, no, by nine I think I've done this one because, that's correct. So 14 by nine. I've cut it a little bit smaller on this width because I want to add that um, embossed piece at the bottom. So they're my pieces. So let's get on and do some work. I'm going to pop these little bits to one side. I'll pop my card. I'll just stand and see whether that's still in shot. It's more or less in shot, just so I know where I'm working. And I can be working right in the middle. That's great. So... I'll pop my card blank completely to one side. Don't want to nitpick, but I've left out the P in stamping up. P in stamp. Oh, 
on my title thank you for that i do amend it anyway once i've got cracking once i've finished my video sylvia thank you i go back in and edit everything before i upload it but thank you for pointing that out that's great oh have i missed it here stem oh here not on my video stamming up thank you sylvia you're not nitpicking hang on well i would amend it here we go Please a pee. Can I have a pee, please? <laughs> Thank you, Sylvia. That's made everyone laugh, I hope. Okay, so let's put my card to one side. I'm going to stamp this um, background first. And just using the palm trees just gives it a bit of, um, gives the whole card really a bit of context, I suppose. That's a bit of a big word, isn't it? But kind of makes you think... So I'm using pool party ink on pool party card and I'm using the palm trees. So just tap, 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 nothing particularly special about that. But I'm thinking very carefully about my placement. I want to be quite high up. But I don't want to go off the page. So I'm just going to have a glance. And palm trees sometimes are on the wonk. You can go straight or slightly to one side. And anyway, it's a cartoony image. We're not looking for sort of like a real life um what's the word a real life representation now this looks a lot brighter than this one but it will dry a little bit darker so i can pop that stamp to one side now I've finished with it and clean it in a bit and that's it for pool party ink so i can also pop that to one side and that's it for the um base layer now i'm going to get on and stamp and color in the car because that's the main deal the main thing the focal point so I'm using stays on um, because I'm using a water-based marker so I'm going to give this a really good tap 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 make sure I'm well inked and I'm going to stamp it straight in the middle because I'm going to use a circle die to cut that outline it's a little bit pale up there. Now you'll notice my car, I've chopped the balloons off. I've been really vicious and I've been really brave. And on the original stamp, it actually had balloons. I think they were like this, attached to the stamp. And I've chopped them off just so I can have the stamp. I can always use the balloons on their own. Um, and stamp them either attached to the car or I could actually now have balloons behind my um, camper van or indeed behind my beetle and you will also see that I've chopped the parcels off the top of my beetle. I just thought that that gave me a bit more versatility with the stamp set and it de indeed it does. So now I'm going to colour in the little sports car and I'm going to use the stamp and write markers are exactly the same ink as in as is in the ink pads exactly the same um, so let me start I'm going to start with the uh, smoky slate smoky slate grey I'm just making sure that this ink has dried so we don't want to smudge it so I'm not doing anything you want to just be careful on basic white that you don't scribble, scribble, scribble and kind of pill the cardstock. But for this kind of colouring, you're just going to be really, really quick. It's nothing technical. This is not like when we're colouring with blending um, alcohol markers where we want to blend and have light and shade in too much detail. I'm now using basic grey. For the tyre itself and all I'm doing is taking care with the brush end not to go outside the lines just like colouring in as a child and if I didn't have a steady hand I can use the fine pen end just that the fine pen end on the stamp and write markers is very fine it is mainly um, meant for handwriting rather than um, colouring and the brush end is a much thicker line. So that's my tyres. I'm going to colour in 
um, the body of the car using real red and all I'm going to do is very carefully I will just go kind of round the outline, round the outside and I don't want to spend too much time colouring but I wanted to just give you a few hints and tips about um, when to use stamp and write markers really they are really excellent for colouring in but I tend to use them on images like this that's a cartoon rather than something that I wanted to look realistic so a flower that looks quite realistic I would use blends or watercolour you've seen me do that many times I'm just going to go right inside the edge with that fine probably doesn't show up very easily on camera I don't know whether I can get a close-up I don't know whether I can actually zoom in I don't think I can zoom in no I can't zoom in using my volume keys on video I will just lift that to the camera so you can see you can still see some of the lines so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go over again towards the bottom of the car and just kind of give it a tiny bit of shade as if the bottom of the car was maybe in shadow and then a tiny bit just right along the top and let's see if that makes it look a little bit more three-dimensional bring that back up to the camera and just let that focus so it's improved it a little bit now I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to the headlight I'm going to add um, a little bit of the paler grey to the bumper but not all of it I'm going to kind of give it a bit of a stripe just so it looks a bit um, like a reflection and I'm going to add a little bit of pool party just to the windscreen but only a tiny bit just so that it looks like and now I'm going to pick up some highlights with my chalk marker and I'm going to actually add um, a couple of little reflections on the wheel a tiny bit of a reflection on the top top of the bonnet and a little bit on the back of the boot and I will just bring that up to the camera so you can see that detail so I've just added those tiny little bits with the chalk marker and that just finishes it off it looks quite cartoony and I'm quite happy with that image now I'm not quite sure why I had Sahara sand in there oh I know why because I thought we will add a little bit of ground for that car to sit on so all I'm going to do is just take my marker and run it really quickly and this marker is a little bit dry actually you can re-ink so the Stampin' Right markers you can actually re-ink and I think I talked about that last week you go to the brush end you get a pair of pliers and you pull out this entire top and then with the reinker bottle, you add drops of ink. You'll see the felt tip um, inside. You know when you take out the insides of a felt tip pen, what it looks like. Now I'm just going to do my last bit of stamping, and that's the sentiment. So rest and relax. And we'll just stamp that on there. Oh, let's have an emergency side. That was a bit of rubbish inking from my side so just again try and get that straight if I can looking from underneath it's not always easy I'll pop everything in my box and then I can tidy up that's all of my stamping now I'm going to bring in the um, big machine I'm just going to get rid of this and then my machine will stick Oh, it should slip around less, shall we say. I'm going to stand up as well. That's smashing so I can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to use my big machine and the circle dies. And I'm going to try and remember which one I actually used. It was the next one up. So my layering circles, I'm going to cut the car. Now you can decide where you want your car. Do you want it a bit nearer the top? Let's have a look at the original. Do you want it a bit nearer the bottom or do you want it right in the middle? So I'm going to go sort of middle 
on this one. I think I did it a bit too close to the bottom on that circle. Let's get that through the machine. Grand. Beep beep. <laughs> I love it. I'll just pop those circles to one side. Now I'm going to do that embossing using the Hive embossing folder. And this is lovely. It's like a honeycomb, but it's quite random. They're not exactly the same, the little marks. And I'm just going to pop my piece of real red inside the folder and I'm going to switch out my plates because for this one it's a 3D embossing folder and I just want my platform which is number one and I need plate number four which is for the 3D embossing folders and that's my platform for the new stamping cut and emboss machine. If you have a different cutting machine you'll have to look at what platform and what plates you need for the 3D embossing folders and they are different depending on the machines. Let's just pop that. I will be needing that again because every card that we're making today actually has that hive embossing folder. So that's the lovely embossed piece and I like it either um, embossed or debossed. I think it looks great. It looks almost like a tyre tread on that side. I think it's a really nice um, embossing folder because it's you can interpret it how you like really. It's not exactly a honeycomb so it does lend itself just to add texture to a variety of different cards. So now it's just a case of assembling. So the first thing I'm going to assemble is I'm going to actually pop this embossed piece behind my uh, pool party. Now something I did notice after I'd taken the photographs of this card was the piece of red behind was sticking out a bit so I'm going to actually just trim a right little bit off one end. Even though I've trimmed them, trimmed it to 14 um, centimetres I just want to do that and I'm going to use stamp and seal just along the bottom and just adhere that to the back of there and that sticks nicely because it's um, textured really heavily textured I wanted to make sure I had a nice strong glue and I'll use multi-purpose liquid glue for the back and we'll stick that whole layer down really simple so like I say there's nothing complicated or particularly unusual about any of these cards that we're making today just some quick simple um, card making fun but I wanted to show you how I like to get good use from my um, celebration stamps because as a demonstrator I can only use them while they're valid. I can't demonstrate them once, they're, once they've disappeared. So I do like to get good use out of them and just pairing them up with another stamp set for me just gives me maximum value now all i'm going to do for these pieces i've cut them to the right length or the length that i think i want to use so let me just tell you what that is oops um so that one is 11 centimeters the next one is nine centimeters and then my sentiment just is what it is and this one is two and a half centimeters and this one will be one and a half I guess one and a half centimeters oh do you like do you like my ruler it's a ruler you can wear oh not that way that way look at that <laughs> I thought that was fun that'd be good in my craft room and so all I'm going to do for these is I'm just going to cut them on an angle now if you want to make sure you always get the same angle you can layer them up like this just lay them up and you can take the same angle behind so you know that you've got the same angle each time. So if I layer that one up on top, flip it over like that and then I'm just going to trim that one down. And then all I'm going to do is just layer those pieces with my car. So we'll have this 
pool party piece, then we'll pop the car on, then we'll pop this piece of black over the top, and that just makes all the colours pop. And then we can just decide where we want the car. And then we'll pop the sentiment over the top of that and just layer it all up. And then that's job done. So let's just stick those down. I've moved my bin so I've got more space and now I've got nowhere to put all my bits. So I know that I want this piece as my starting piece about there. So if you've never used um, Stampin' Right markers for colouring in, I hope that's encouraged you to just be a bit brave. You do need to feel a bit brave to use them because they're not quite as forgiving as the alcohol markers. Um, you do, for straightforward colouring in, you do need to feel a little bit braver. Now then, where do we have that car? Let's have it there. Making sure he's straight. He's not going uphill, is he? Is he going uphill? Let's see when I pop that on. Yeah, he's going a bit uphill. There we are. And we'll pop this little black strip underneath. I do like to lay little bits of scraps of DSP like this. It's, um, it's a useful way of using them up. And I just wanted to cover the bottom of that circle. There we are, first card done. But before we do finish anything, what we'll do is we will just decorate our envelope. And I think what we might do, and I think you can see now just how that um, palm tree has dried a little bit darker. Now, let's go for... palm tree and I might just need I might just need my grid sheet back. Let's go for a palm tree down here. There we go and let's have a car. I'm not going to colour it in but let's have a car just there on the flap. So we don't like naked envelopes. And that's first card finished. Now we'll be showing you another hint and tip of how to use the stamp and write markers on a different card, actually on this card. So we'll go for this card next. Let's just pop that box all to one side. Now I've tidied up. So, for this card, this one's probably got the most technique in it. Let me just stand up and see if I've got any comments. No, we're all good. Awesome. Excellent. All right, let's crack on. So, for this card, I'm going to actually use Stamparatus. And I'm going to introduce just another stamp set, but only for the sentiment Happy Birthday, because in the Driving By stamp set, we've got Oh, thanks. You've got style and driving by just to say hi. So we haven't got a birthday sentiment. Um, and I wanted to have a happy birthday. I'm going to use the driving by just to say hi. But I'm going to um, only stamp part of that. So I'm going to show you how. Um, and I've brought in the um, artistically inked stamp set just for the happy birthday sentiment. Now of course I'm sure that you've got other stamp sets in your... Uh, stash with a happy birthday sentiment because there are lots of them but I just wanted to show you what I was using um, I'm going to just pop that there's another stamp set that I'm popping to one side that I might just share with you now this is a fun card so my starting point for this one was those lovely new skinny tall envelopes and I've stamped the back of this one already so these are in the January to June mini catalogue and this was my starting point because I really love these tall cards so in my kit I've actually grabbed a white envelope one of the skinny ones and I've made my card blank I give you the measurement so I will just bring will I bring in my grid sheet no I'm okay 
I won't. Um, I'm just going to, oops, just going to turn to my notebook and then I can just read out the dimensions. So this um, card base is actually 21 centimetres, which is the width of the A4 but then it's 19 centimetres and I've scored it at nine and a half which is half of 19 because these envelopes are just that little bit narrower, a little bit thinner than our, I think it's DL envelopes. So I've just taken that down a little bit narrower and just cut it at 19 by the width of A4 which is 21 and I've scored at nine and a half. I've then got a smoky slate base layer and that measures nine centimeters by twenty and a half then I've got a piece of basic white and that's eight centimeters by twenty centimeters and I've also got a skinny strip of pumpkin pie orange and that is two centimeters by twenty centimeters and there are my little bits and pieces. I've got a piece of basic white to stamp an extra camper van on that I've then coloured and raised up in the middle. So I'll show you how I did that. But first of all, I want to show you how I use the Stamparatus to actually get my three camper vans equally spaced between them. So what I did was I... Um, popped my piece of basic white into the Stamparatus. Now I did have another piece, which one was it, with a mark on it, but never mind. I think it might have been this one. Never mind. A uh, little piece of grid sheet. And I actually measured um, where the centre was. So the centre of this... Um, let me get my ruler the right way around. So this, if you remember, this piece measures 20. So I actually wanted um, a mark in the middle, which is at the 10 centimetres position. So I actually was looking at this line here, at the 10 centimetres position. And then I placed my stamp in the position, in the 10 centimetres position. So... I lined my piece of white up. Let me just make sure did I line it. That's right. I lined it along the first the first vertical line on the grid, which I think you can see here. So I lined my cardstock there. But I actually popped my stamp over that mark there and then I picked it up with the um, plate two hinge spaces down the hinge and then I knew that when I went two spaces up I would have a, a camper van positioned two hinge spaces above my centre one I could then move down one, two, stamp, one, two and stamp again and I would be equally distanced so that's how I got my measurements and that should become apparent as I put my piece of card in the one thing I do need to get out from underneath is one of the magnets so I want that to anchor because I've got my piece of grid in and it does tend to slide about a bit I'm actually going to position my cardstock so it's along this first grid line and I'm going to put my magnet down. Make sure that that doesn't interfere. I'll just put that piece of washi tape to the top. These magnets are so strong. So, so strong. And I'm going to stamp with Memento. I'm just going to see if there's any comments following that waffle. No, we're all good. Please make comments if you don't understand anything. So I'm going to use Memento Tuxedo Black because I'm actually going to add colour to these camper vans using um, 
Well, actually, I could use any black on this one because I'm not adding any colour to the camper vans that are on this piece. So I could use stays on. But I am going to use Memento because for my middle camper van, which I'm going to stamp on a separate piece, I'm going to colour using alcohol blend. So I'm moving one, two hinge spaces down. Now here's a tip. If you pop your lid underneath, it keeps the plate flat. It makes it just slightly easier to ink. So I've moved that down two spaces. And I'm going to move it down another two hinge spaces. One, two and ink and stamp again. This is a unique feature of the Stampin' Up! Stamparatus stamp positioning tool. It's the only one on the market to my knowledge that actually has a free hinge that you can take your plates out, rotate them so you've got two sides of your plates that you can use and you can actually do st hinge step stamping so you can get that nice repeat pattern. So you can see if I'd have just moved down one space I would have another camper van in the middle so I can do camper vans on top of camper vans or indeed any image on top of any image. So that's my base piece. I'm just going to carefully try and get this very strong magnet. So that's my base layer. I'm going to just pop another piece of basic white in here. <laughs> really strong magnet. And just hold that down and I'm going to ink my camper van again and stamp another image which I can then colour and cut and adhere on top and let's just pop my lid back on my ink Ooh, get that piece out now we've done with the stamparators we can pop that to one side bring back the pieces. So I'm not going to actually add any colour onto this base piece, onto any of these camper vans, because I want the middle camper van to stand out and be on its own. The only thing I'm going to stamp now is the sentiment to the bottom and I'm going to use Happy Birthday from the Artistic Linked and I'm going to use Driving By to say hi. Um, I'm going to use Memento black. Now if you feel nervous about stamping your sentiment straight onto this base piece then I would suggest that you use a piece of scrap um, white like I did with the first card and then um, snip it and stamp it stamp it and st I can't speak stamp it and snip it and then adhere it to the base because it is tricky I'm finding it really tricky at the moment just to see my stamp because I am on a very difficult angle. So I'm just going to be brave and stamp happy birthday towards the bottom. Cross my fingers that it's somewhere near straight. We'll be happy with that. Now I'm going to show you a neat trick. This is something else that you can use your stamp and write markers for. And basic black actually comes as an individual single marker pen. So it's really it's a really handy pen to have in your kit. I'm going to use the brush end and I'm actually going to ink up the words driving by to say and I'm not going to ink up the word high and just. So I'm going to just run the marker pen flat. I'm using the the um broader end and I'm going to actually hold it flat. I'm not holding it pointy and just run that ink and then I'm going to just turn that round to make life easy and just ink up the words to say and I'm going to give that a huff <sighs> as if I was cleaning my glasses and now I'm going to try and centralise that and stamp that just above my happy birthday driving by to say happy birthday that's a really handy tip if you've never known that before and of course the other thing that you can do is if I just grab another colour so poppy parade just for example and if I grab a piece of scrap 
if you've never seen this happen before, what you can do is actually end up with two different colours on one stamp. Get the right end. So if I re-ink the driving by and to say, just because I already had black on those words, and then I use the red on the other words, you can get two different colours on one sentiment. Give that the huff and stamp that. And now you can see how you can get two different colours on one sentiment. So that's a really fun way of using your Stampin' Right markers. Now I want to say that that doesn't work with Stampin' Blends. You can't do that technique using Stampin' Blends because these are alcohol-based ink and it just evaporates way too quickly from your stamp. So you need to use the Stampin' Right markers, which are the water-based ink, the same ink, um, as is in our ink pads to get that technique to happen to work. So let me just pop those back where they belong. So that's just a little hint and tip for using your Stampin' Right markers. Now to colour this camper van I'm just going to quickly show you how I use my blends. Now I did use my blends really quickly. I used um, light smoky slate same thing again for the type for the wheels so light smoky slate from middle to edge brush end and give it a really quick whiz and then i use my dark smoky slate for the tires just to be a bit darker And then I used pumpkin pie light and dark and I've used light crumb cake and the light crumb cake was for the wheel arches. If you've ever seen these VW campers, they're really fun um, vehicles and they do come in this colour. I've got a friend who has one in this colour. Slightly sad to say that I've seen far too many camper vans as I did a two year stint working for a van conversion company. As a kind of temporary stand in person <laughs> for two years. Now, my um, light pumpkin pie stamp and blend has got really worn at the end, so I've given it a haircut. It still works perfectly fine, plenty of ink left in it. But that just allows me to point out that stamp and blend, stamping blends markers are actually a consumable item. They're not designed to last forever. And I know that the um, brush end of this light one has got frayed and fuzzy and soft on the end because I was colouring in um, using it to colour those rhinestone gems so that's why it's got quite frayed on the end but there you go and then ow, I'm going to use snap that onto my hand I'm going to use the dark pumpkin pie just along the edges just to add a bit of tone and shade and right along the bottom there and I'm going to go in with the fine tip end and give it a little bit more shade and you can see how you can very quickly just add a bit of shading and start to very quickly make it look quite cartoony and I'm going to go back and oh, let's just add a little bit more to the reef there I'm going to go back with my light and really blend this in. So by using the light and the dark from each set, you can start to really blend those colours together. But that top's really stiff on there. 
like so that really blends it all together but you want to leave some shading now for the windscreen um, I've used um, balmy blue light balmy blue and I've just gone quick 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 a couple of little strokes stops the windscreens and the windows looking completely white and then I've just blended over with light pool party and let's give those bumpers a bit of colour with some just a little tickle with that light smoky slate so you can see I think I also added some yellow and some red if I bring this up you can see that shading really coming to play now for my um, middle one I'm going to fussy cut that but just wave a magic wand and I've already done one so here's one I made earlier now I want to show you something even more fun because that looks cute how much cuter does this one look oh I just love it I'm going to just show you quickly how I've done this um, so I'm going to bring back she said if she can find it bring back in my stamparatus and I'm also going to bring back that fun pack of patterned DSP with all those lovely fun patterns and I'm going to pull out this one and I'm going to line it up now I don't want to waste too much but I'm going to line it up so I've got this either this big flower or maybe that orange flower right in the middle of the door so I'm kind of just eyeballing it and I reckon that if I stamp if I stamp there I'll be able to get it with that orange flower right on the door so I need to just grab my memento ink and stamp that back up and stamp the camper van onto my designer series paper now can you see that I've got that lovely pattern there and all I did was I fussy cut let me just pop that stamparatus out of the way all I did was I fussy cut the parts of the pattern this is called paper piecing and if you remember I'll bring in this one that I've just coloured in if you remember at Christmas time I used a stamp set with a um, a lady, the headless lady, um, she was holding a big pile of Christmas presents and I stamped her onto designer series paper and then she had a really pretty patterned skirt and that was exactly the same technique so this is the same it's called paper piecing so you're really just stamping onto either patterned paper or plain cardstock and piecing it together a bit like a mosaic I guess so again if you're not particularly oops sorry for fumbling and um, if you're not particularly confident with colouring in all you need to do is colour in your camper van window frames wheels wheel arches and then you can piece your bits together and I think we could give him or her a patterned roof so you just cut out the bits that you want to piece in and I just think that that's such fun and there we have it and look how different those two look. So one with the red flower and one with the little orange flower. I think that's fantastic. So I'm actually going to go with this one. Even though my strip for the side is orange. Um, just because I've actually got this one stuck and fussy cut. So we're going to go with this one. And put all my other bits and pieces. Oop, I'm dropping things. Back in my box. And we can go ahead and assemble this card. So I'm going to bring my machine back in and I'm going to just give you another tip 
about embossing this piece because you'll see that my piece I'm going to stand again you love the flowery one great stuff I'm glad you like that so you'll see my piece is longer than my actual embossing folder and all I'm going to do is emboss it twice so I'm going to pop it in the folder pop it in the sandwich run it through my machine And out the other side and then I'm going to pop it back in the folder I'm actually only going to pop the bit that hasn't been embossed into the folder I'm just going to move that down I'm not going to worry too much about lining it up exactly because it's not the focal point of the card so I'm just going to run that through. There we are. Oh, <laughs> spot the deliberate mistake. I actually flipped it over. So that's really fabulous. Um, I didn't mean to flip it over. So now I've got one little end debossed and one end embossed. So shall we try that again or shall we just go with it? I think we'll just stick it on the card. I honestly don't think that anybody at all will notice that because it's not the focal point. All you're doing is adding a little bit of texture to the card. So sorry for those of you who are watching who are perfectionists who are probably cringing that I'm going to get away with that. I'm just going to re-burnish that crease so it's not bouncing around. So first thing I'm going to do is stick down my... Um, forgotten what oh, smoky slate I think it is smoky slate layer so grab my tumble let's stick that down but yes it is possible to emboss a piece that's longer than the embossing folder by just moving it down a bit but not flipping it over maybe I should re-demonstrate that I'm going to, while I just stick this, um, shall I or shan't I, shall I re-demonstrate this? Can somebody give me a thumbs up, a yes or a no? Would you like me to re-demonstrate this? Because I feel like I've just completely messed it up. I'll just hang on till you comment. <laughs> You're all very quiet. I know there's a delay though. Well, you make up your... No, right, that's grand. Cracking, well, crack on. So same as the first um, card, I'm going to use stamp and seal just along one edge. I'll just get that moving. Which will allow me to then stick. And I'm going to flip it over so I can decide just how much... I want poking out, which is not a great deal. It's just a pop of colour, just a little flash of colour. You don't need too much. So we can just see that smoky slate underneath and then stick that whole layer down. Pretty simple card really, but just a few tips about colouring using the blends. So the things to note are you have two ends to the blends. You've got the fine tip end and you've got the brush end. The brush end can go a bit fluffy and a bit broken down if you use it for other things such as colouring in gems because it roughens it up or if indeed you put a little bit too much pressure on. But the stamping blends are a consumable item but they are fantastic they give you that lovely really easy to use that lovely blended um finished article and i'm just popping this center camper van up on dimensionals just to make it that focal point 
and again I might just give it a bit of um, a grounding so let's just use that light smoky slate and just give that van something to stand on so it doesn't look like it's completely floating in midair just to finish it off and that's that card finished now no naked envelopes again so I can stamp my um, little camper van on there the other thing I could do is actually if I wanted to make a matching inside now I could cut a piece of DSP by using the envelope flap as a template with a pencil I'm just trimming that and then I could just trim oh, using my trimmer that's disappeared. Where have I put that? Which surface did I find to put that down on? There we are. This is very much on the hoof. I'll just see whether that's... I might just take a smidge more off that one. Very much crafting on the hoof. And just fussy cut along that pencil mark. And just take a bit of an angle and maybe a bit of an angle there. Eyeball. even though they come with a pretty liner. Or a pretty patterned um, inside. Now I've just licked the gummed bit to stick that DSP in. I'm going to fold it over. And what I will do with this envelope is I won't um, post this envelope I'll actually do one of those um, what's the word I'm looking for one of those oh, I will show you because I demonstrated it a couple of weeks ago one of those treasury sort of tag enclosures with a little bit of twine so I'll probably do exactly the same for this one as I did for that one there's how to quickly make a matching liner so your envelope isn't exactly naked. It's quite nice and bright and colourful. So, card number two. Same but different. Let's move swiftly on. Oh, what have I done with my card number one? I don't know what I've done with card number one. I want to get those out at the end. Let's just keep the cards that we've just made out and then we can show them right at the end so let's swap boxes around and for my last card oh, <laughs> oh gosh I'm really juggling here I don't know what I've done with my first one now I had them all out oh here we go what's going on it's the more you get out on your workspace, the less you can see anything at all. Not helped by all the little bits of rubbish as well. Goodness me. Right, here we go. So this is card number three. And I'll just hold this up. Oh, hi, Maxie. I'll just hold this one up. Now, I completely cased this from somebody. I saw somebody on Pinterest had used this technique and I thought, how fabulous. I think they'd used the camper van. I thought, how fabulous. For those of, of us out here who maybe don't like colouring in detail, we're going to go outside the edges but get this really cute technique. So, for this card, I've got your general regular size card blank in basic white thick cardstock. I've got a piece of fresh freesia and that measures a bit smaller than usual, eight centimeters by 13 centimeters. So that's a slightly smaller layer than usual. Then I've got a layer of basic white and that is seven centimeters by 12 centimeters and I've got a piece of black scrap and I'm going to heat emboss my sentiment 
very on trend at the moment the white heat embossed onto black for sentiments is very on trend and I'm going to add some gems to that as well a little bit of ribbon and some twine and I'm going to use a sentiment from Lovely You. I thought that miles apart, but still in my heart, went really nicely with the, with the idea of a car traveling. So I'm going to use the beetle image and you will see that I've chopped off the parcels from the top. And I will bring, bring back in actually for this card, my grid sheet, because I'm going to be stamping images slightly off. slightly off my cardstock so let's just pop you there and I'm going to use stays on which I've just lost here we are I'm going to use stays on ink I'm going to use soft succulent and fresh freesia I'm going to need the broad water painter and some water in a jar the sentiment from the stamp set and you'll see that I've cut off so the stamp originally had the parcels balanced on the top of the car I've just mounted them on a block so I could show you that you can still use them and you can use them with this car you could use them on another card and all I did to cut that off was I used my snips but very very carefully very carefully and I slightly um, slightly bent my stamp as I was actually trimming it just to make sure I could get right in between the car and the parcels so sometimes you can be brave and actually chop up your stamps if there's something that you want so just be brave so I'm going to stamp my cars quite randomly I don't want them necessarily to um, be stamped in their entirety right on the cardstock, so we'll go a bit random. I'm not quite sure whether I'm exactly straight there, but hey, let's have one there. And again, this is a technique that you can use for any lined um, image that you have so if you don't want to colour in let's say you've got a flower that you want to stamp and add colour to but you don't want to colour in in a precise fashion this technique can be used for any stamp set that has a lined image now I'm going to take ink into the lid of the ink pad now, Sylvia, I know you were watching Lorna last evening, so was I, and Lorna gave a great tip. If you haven't watched my team member and friend Lorna Carter at Lorna Carter Creations, um, I recommend that you catch some of her demonstrations as well, because she, she's a great one for giving you some extra tips. So if you don't have the physical strength to squeeze the ink into the ink pad lid, what you can do is take an acrylic block and just squish some of the ink onto the acrylic block and you can use that in exactly the same way as picking the ink up from the lid. And in fact, this tip I really like because it will mean that you don't forget to then mop the excess water from the lid of your ink pad and then close it up. So I actually really liked that tip. So thank you, Lorna. But I am just going to move that messy acrylic block to one side now I'm going to pick up another tip that I got from Lana last night was actually putting a lid on your water jar because last week or was it the week before I actually knocked my entire water jar all over a project that I was busy making and the air turned a shade of balmy blue so I'm just going to really water that ink down and I'm going to work very quickly and I'm going to pick one two three of the images let's go for maybe one let's copy this one one two three four of the images and I'm going to work really quickly and I'm just going to go wash 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 
wash, 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 and wash, 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 as quickly as that. I'm not going to be tempted to go back and add anything extra. The colour is on there. If I add any extra onto basic white, I'll rough up the cardstock and damage it. So that's it. I've added some tint of colour. That's it for that um, colour. I'm just looking for my kitchen paper so I can dry the lid and close that ink pad. Just dry all that water out. Get rid of that fresh freezer from my brush. And same again, I'm just going to go straight on. And that's it, I've added the colour. So it just gives that background. And again, this for this card, the focal point should be the sentiment, the focal point is not any one of the cars, it's like I've made a patterned paper background. So again, it's maybe a bit of a brave departure for colouring for some of us, but for some of us who don't like that really precise adding colour, colouring within the lines, blending, have you got the blend technique right, have you got the water colouring technique right, have you got the shadowing, all of that jazz, if that is not your bag, then I really um, do recommend that you give this colouring technique a go. So I can pop that to one side now and let that dry off because it's quite wet. And I'm going to use my scrap of black to stamp the sentiment. Um, I've got my embossing buddy, anti-static and grease removal embossing buddy which I'm going to rub over my cardstock. I've got my white embossing powder here. I can open my tub. I'm just going to move those bits to one side. And I've got my sentiment and some Versamark ink. Versamark is that sticky ink. Now, let me see, is Helen still watching? Bit of a shout out. Is that your sort of technique, adding colour on, Sylvia? Now, if we've still got Helen watching, Helen's pretty new to stamping and is still learning lots of these techniques. Now, Versamark ink is a clear ink. This ink pad should be nice and clean. It's got grubby over the years, but it still works perfectly well. So it's a kind of sticky clear ink and you stamp your image or your sentiment in this sticky clear ink and then you use embossing powder and that hasn't actually stamped very well apologies i'm going to use my emergency side because i can see that that hasn't worked very well at all i've just missed and i've got a little blob of white there let's get rid of that so let's use my embossing buddy again and let's try and stamp that again so always remember you've got an emergency side and always remember that actually it's only a piece of paper if it goes in the bin it's not the end of the world that's why i love this hobby so much um so sticky clear ink it still needs to have good contact with the cardstock and that was the problem with the other side. I hadn't made good contact just with one of the words. And then we're going to add some of this powder. This is embossing powder which is actually granulated plastic. The granulated plastic sticks to this sticky ink. And we tap off the excess just tap on the back now I can also see that I've pressed down too hard and so some of my words have just gone a little bit fat but for the purposes of this demonstration we're not going to worry I'm just going to put the lid back on my embossing powder because that's another thing I don't want to tip up now I'm going to use a heat tool so if anyone's new this is a heat tool it's just like a long hot air blower but it is hotter than a hairdryer, so don't be tempted to use your hairdryer. It has two heat settings. Number one and number two. I'm using it on full heat. 
and I'm going to keep it moving so it doesn't scorch the card but the heat will then melt the granulated plastic and turns it into shiny embossed letters or words. It's difficult to see the white embossing actually turning. It's much easier when we have a metallic. I will just hold this up to the camera a bit closer. So you can see now, maybe in the light, that those letters are a bit shiny and raised up. So if Helen's still watching, that's heat embossing. I know you were asking about it the other week. And I'm going to actually fussy cut. Now I could find a um, label die to cut this, but I'm actually going to fussy cut this sentiment. So I'm just going to go carefully around. I'll probably give that a curved end, I think. Let's go rounded. Again, it seems to be Let's get rid of that excess. Seems to be a real trend at the moment to actually have our sentiments die cut or fussy cut. As well as on labels. So I think that looks quite cute. Fussy cut and we'll get rid of these scraps. And we can get rid of grid sheet again. Let's have a look. Oops. In the bin. So now we've got our pattern and you can see how the water has curled that piece. It's still drying out a little bit so we'll just pop that to one side with our sentiment and we need to just bring back in our embossing machine and the embossing folder and just pop my water colouring brush away. Let's just grab Ooh. the machine. Same again, we're going to use our piece of fresh freesia in the folder. Hinge forward, I always write on my folders just to remind myself and when I actually run in-person classes, just to remind the class attendees which plates to use and to remember to put it hinge forward. And now we're doing a whole layer, you'll be able to see how beautiful this embossing folder actually is. So we have this really lovely honeycomb texture and I hope you can see what I meant by it's kind of random, it's not, it's not an exact honeycomb. It's beautiful, it's quite na natural, sort of nature inspired. And I just really liked these colours together as well. Um, I think on this one I've gone debossed, so on this one we'll go embossed. And I'm just going to layer that up. Now, also one of the trends is to layer up kind of a bit wonky as well, so we can see more of that texture. But I'm going to I'm going to go straight again. I'm going to add some ribbon to this one but instead of a big bow of ribbon I'm actually going to add a piece of black baker's twine so I don't need that much of either I'll just snip myself a piece of baker's twine and I'm going to snip myself a piece of ribbon just enough to wrap around that layer I'm going to add um, let me have a think yeah we'll probably go about in the middle. I'm going to add a bit of stamp and seal to the back just on either side just to catch that ribbon. Come on. And we'll just add that straight across the middle. Catch that round the back. Oops. So it's still loose on the front and I'm going to pop my baker's twine through. Now you can either tie this in a knot and a bow but first of all I'm going to just position my sentiment and decide where I want my knot and my bow. I think I need to have it over this side 
So I'm going to aim for about the tyre of that car. That, that bit of um, stamp and seal is going to help me. Now this is Fablon sticky back plastic on my desk. So I wouldn't recommend this on a, on a paper background, but it's going to help me just hold that layer still while I tie my bow. And if you remember, tying bows is all about the faff at the end. Well, we just faff with those tails and get the bow the right size. And they never want to sit straight, but hey, we won't hold it against them. Now I can just release that from my desk surface. Now, if you wanted to do similar, you could actually use maybe a silicon mat to stick it onto. Um, or you could weight it down with something. Now I'm going to stick that layer to my embossed layer. And for that reason, now how, how have I managed to get one of Lorna's cat hairs in my craft room? <laughs> if you do watch Lorna, you'll know that she's having a forever having a battle with cat hairs or kitty glitter when she's demonstrating. They seem to come from all over the place. <laughs> I think that was from one of my fluffy um, blankets from the living room. I'll stick that mat on layer. Now you can see we've still got a bit of a curl. Ooh. We do need plenty of glue when we're sticking to an embossed piece. So if you are using a multi-purpose liquid glue to stick flat card to a textured piece of embossed card make sure you put plenty on and again we'll go probably put a little bit more than usual on because it it's obviously sinks into that texture and we'll stick that whole layer down and I just thought that's really pretty it makes a pretty card from maybe what some people might deem a stamp set with cars on to be entirely masculine but actually I think that that's really pretty and feminine um, with those colours because some of us girls like cars too oops that's a sticky mess just one sec oh where's my little piece of kitchen paper I'll just pop that sentiment down. Um, I'll pop that there so that little bow can just be underneath. I quite like my sentiments to be over to one side as well. So there we are. Another technique just for adding some colour. And like I said before, um, when I first did it, just go with it. Just don't be tempted to go back once you've put it on because then you'll get two layers of that colour. It's just a really quick water flash of um, added colour. Now I do want to add on some bling. And I've just got some of those gems. They are the um, In Colour Jewels. And so I'm just going to use those fresh freezer ones that I have left. I'll pop one there. A big one and a little one. And maybe another big one oh, down here. There we go. Just add a few jewels. So quite again, quite a quick card, but we've added some colour in a really easy way. We've added some texture with the embossing folder and we've done a little bit of heat embossing um, and got that really on trend black and white sentiment, white on black. So let's just bring those three cards. Well, I will bring the three cards in if I can find them. So these are the ones we've made just now. We've switched out and had a patterned camper van. So cute. I think that was the one I made yesterday. As I can see that annoying edge there <laughs> that's poking out. That's really annoying. 
and I can't find the other one that I've just made. I've buried it somewhere under a pile of stuff. <laughs> so hopefully you've enjoyed those colouring techniques. We'll just leave them there so you can see them. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed those colouring techniques and not to be afraid of Stampin' Right markers for adding some colour, particularly to a cartoon type image. Uh, stamping blends and paper piecing as a way of adding colour to a project and then that really fast watercolour wash. My big tip there is if you're using a basic white cardstock is to be very quick and not to... Um, allow your brush to be in contact with the cardstock for too long. Same with colouring with the Stampin' Right markers because basic white cardstock doesn't like too much um, wetness on it. So if you rub and rub and rub, you'll rub a bobble up um, of cardstock. So let me just switch the camera around and I can say goodbye. Let me just have a look. Ooh, have a look at my little love hearts a moment. Well I try and press the right button. Hello and I'm back in the room. <laughs> Thank you all for watching today and if you're not watching live, if you're watching on catch up, can I say thank you for also watching me on catch up um, and I'll be back next week with some more cards and some more tips for you all. So please stay tuned and keep your eye on my social media because I've probably got some other projects to post during the week. But thanks again for watching and hope to see you all next week. Take care. Bye bye. Lots of love.